Good afternoon and welcome back to another episode of Chat with Brandy where we talk everything money, financial health, business health. May have had an error there. Hopefully we're good. Um, yeah, so we talk about money and we talk about entre entrepreneurial health and financial health specifically for the residents of Alberta. This is episode number 13. Um, hopefully I won't have anybody trying to ring my doorbell today, but I do have my dishwasher running in the background and it really likes attention. So you may hear it from time to time. Um, but anyways, we're going to get into this video by popular demand. I am starting a series on how to start your own business or your own side hustle. So specifically, we'll talk a lot about the residents of Edmonton, but a lot of the other information will be useful to pretty much anybody in Canada. So obviously when we're talking, when I'm talking about starting a business, I'm talking about any income generating activity that isn't um, a job. So you're not being paid as an employee. They're not taking source deductions for you. Uh, it could be, you know, like I've talked about in recent videos, um, rental income. It could be uh, contracting for somebody. It could be odd jobs. It could be driving for Uber, whatever, right? So those are all considered businesses, no matter how kind of part-time they are. Uh, so we're going to kind of do this in a series because there's so much information that is involved in really um, taking the proper steps and starting a business through the lens of, you know, I'm a, I'm a bookkeeper and tax repair by trade. So I'm going to be talking a lot about tax compliance and kind of uh, using my own experiences of starting a side hustle, turning into a full-time business as well as the collective experience of all of the clients that I've worked with throughout the years. So I hope that this series of videos can help you to uh, avoid mistakes that maybe I've made or people I've seen make in starting a business, um, as well as just running it and making it as profitable and helpful as possible for you to get you on that path to profitability, okay? Um, so, if you are not a current or prospective uh, business owner, you may not find this the series uh, too useful, but if you know somebody who kind of has that entrepreneurial sparkle in their eye, please feel free to share this series with them so that they can get the help that they need. So throughout the series, so, and I keep saying series, I don't know how many videos it's going to take. I'm thinking four, um, but throughout the four videos, uh, I will be referencing this checklist on my website called the business startup checklist. So it's a good resource for you to explore and kind of look at the links and things like that, that I will be talking about as we go through this journey together. And the analogy that I'm going to be making kind of over and over here is having a baby. So if you are not a parent and, or, you know, like let, we're just imagining here. So you're not a parent, you're thinking about, I want to start a family or a business. Um, I believe in my, you know, planner mind that kind of the best, and you can't really ever prepare for having a baby and you can't really ever fully prepare for, you know, having a business and what that's going to look like. But, um, in my mind, the best way would be, you know, to research it as much as possible, talk to other parents, know kind of what, what it's going to entail and the pros and cons and that kind of thing. So we're going to kind of make that comparison. So this video today is going to be pre-conception phase. It's like thinking about, do we want a baby? Is this something that we're cut out for? Um, it's a big responsibility. It can be life-changing. So it's a big thing, right? Um, so am I willing or ready or willing to have my own business? So I everything that I'm going to talk about today, I would recommend physically writing down or typing the answers to the questions that I ask you. Um, these can then be transcribed later into an actual formal business plan. If you decide to go that route, which a lot of experts would recommend, um, it can be a huge asset to you and your businesses you grow. Plus if you ever need funding or anything like that, um, from investors or a bank that they, they will want a business plan from you. So it's a great starting point for that. So kind of step one for this is assessing your opportunity and committing to your business. So if, if you are looking at that checklist, um, you will kind of see that this is the first step to this potential business baby's life. Okay. So no commitments have been made yet. 
but the idea is definitely planted. Maybe you're tired of your job. Oh, and I just see Canada Post is pulling up, so we may get a surprise doorbell. Um, sorry, I got distracted there. So you're probably like, okay, I'm in this job. I hate answering to my boss. Or maybe it's like, I need more money. I have this very specific talent that I think I could make money on. I want more flexibility. Whatever that looks like, that seed is planted for you to either start a side hustle or start, you know, a full-time business. So now we kind of want to get deeper into this. So this is kind of like taking a parenting class before you even conceive, which I think is like, okay. Um, the number one, is determine why you want to start a business. So that was where we were just talking about like that, that seed that's planted in your mind. So it seems kind of simple when it starts. Um, but it's great to get this down on paper as a starting point for your overall business strategy and objective. Sorry, I got distracted there because my husband just texted me saying I'm not live. Um, but I can see that my camera's recording. So I will be uploading this a little bit later. Uh, so this why may evolve over time in some ways, but in my experience, the core of your why will stay more or less the same. Okay. So using my own experience as an example, I started this business, um, a bookkeeping and tax preparation as a side hustle when my kids were babies and it was kind of like a way I need more income. Um, you know, I had my education in this, I had experience working with an accountant prior to this. And I was like, this is a good way for me to make some extra money in the spring during tax season, but I still worked a full-time job at the same time. So that was my kind of main why is I needed the extra money. I, I liked the job. I liked the experience of it and I liked working with people. So it kind of all made sense for me. And then as time went on and it became, you know, like my, my kids got older, got less dependent on me and it became more of a, more of a full-time thing for me. I, you know, eventually left the full-time job behind and my why kind of evolved into this, like, I want to be able to have a career and make money for my family, but also have a flexible schedule so that I can go on field trips if I want to, if I, uh, with my kids or I, you know, am home if they're sick or whatever. Like there's a lot of different uh, motivations for me to do this now, especially like I just love working with my clients. I love what I do. It brings me a lot of job satisfaction, but in that way, of course, money is still a factor, but the why has evolved over time. And yours will too, but it's good to start out with that really concrete why, okay? Um, it may be, you might be analyzing this and being like, okay, my why is because I hate my job. And that might not be the best why to start a business. Um, you might wanna just do a little more soul searching and discover if starting a business is really what you want or if you just want a different job because starting a business and running a business isn't necessarily easy. It isn't, do I have more flexibility in time? Yes. Um, I can choose to sleep in if I want to. It just means I'm going to be working later and no one's going to fire me for that. Um, but do I spend a lot of time thinking and sometimes stressing and working on the business? Absolutely. Way more time than I ever would have working a nine to five job. Absolutely. So, um, if, if the stress of your job and the time commitment of your job is, is your main reason for why, then I would suggest just digging a little deeper and making sure that there's other whys for you there as well. Okay. Um, okay. So we kind of talked about a lot of the reasons that you might want to start a business. Now, a side hustle is something different. So I consider a side hustle to be an extra, income provider on top of your full-time job or on top of part-time job, right? So it's something that, you know, you're working on part-time. You are probably not, like it's not your main source of income, okay? So some ideas that I think of when I think of side hustle is, yeah, driving for Uber or delivering for Uber, um, doing, like it depends on what your, your skills are, but you know, if you can do piece work for somebody, like if you're um, a handyman, for example, and you go and do odd jobs for people that would be considered kind of a side hustle. Like it's outside of your, your full-time job. Um, 
you know, if you have writing skills, there's, there's so many websites out there, guys, that you can upload on, like, um, check out Fiverr with two R's, check out Upwork. Uh, I just found this Facebook group last night that was called Edmonton Small Jobs for Hire, something like that, that was for, yeah, like handyman work or like small random, you know, like come and shovel my sidewalk or whatever, that kind of stuff. Um, pet sitting, um, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of things going on. So, um, there's lots of ideas out there for side hustles, especially like if you're not looking for a full-time income, just a little bit of extra stuff on the side, there's, there's tons of jobs for that. So I hope that you guys find something that you love there. Okay. So the second, so once you've kind of come up with your main why, we're going to go into determining whether your business idea fits your strengths and and interests. Or if you have no business idea at all, and you're just trying to kind of figure something out, you can just do this activity and hopefully it will lead you down the path to a good idea. So it's called a SWOT analysis. So that's uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And I was going to put it down on a piece of paper, but basically what you would do is just quarter the paper out, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, Start on the strengths and weaknesses. So this is a bit introspective, okay? So you're kind of looking at your own, your, it, it's, this is like a drill down version of a pros and cons list, but on the strengths and weaknesses side of it, you're looking at yourself. And this isn't like strengths and weaknesses when you go to a job interview and you're like, oh, my weakness is that I'm a perfectionist or whatever. Like, no, it's your actual weaknesses. I would suggest if you're gonna work on it today, you know, write down what comes, like what pops out right away, then leave it for a day or two, let that idea stew in your mind and then come back to it. Um, things will come up. Okay. The other thing that I would suggest is talking to someone that you know and trust and knows you really well. So somebody that can look at those strengths and weaknesses, weaknesses and be like, yeah, you know, you're right. Like I would agree that that is a weakness. What about this though? Like, have you noticed that you're always late kind of thing, right? Um, so if you're always late, maybe you don't want to start a delivery business or something like that. Okay. So you're going to do that SWOT analysis. So when you're thinking about the strengths, um, obviously we're talking, um, skills specifically, like if you're a carpenter, you obviously have carpentry skills, but also like, I'm really well organized. I really like people. I'm good at sales. I'm good at writing an email, that kind of thing. So that's going to tell you, um, if you can do the basic administrative part of a business, because even if your business is trade related, so, you know, plumbing or something like that, there's going to be this whole other side of your business where you have to do, you know, basic bookkeeping, filing, invoicing, that kind of thing, right? So if that is a weak, if that is a weak spot for you, put it in the weakness. It doesn't mean that owning a business isn't for you. It just means that you're probably going to have to subcontract that out and you, or, you know, hire somebody to do it. And you're going to have to consider that when you're looking at your profitability. Okay. I just have so many people texting me asking me if I'm okay. We're just going to be a little bit late today. I'm not going to respond to them obviously right now, but okay. Then on the weakness side, so we're going to take an honest look at our own shortcomings. So maybe you don't like sales um, or have a below average organizational skills. Okay. You guys get that part of it. Then on the opportunities and threat side. So these are external things. These are things that you cannot help. You cannot change. Okay. So the opportunities would be your external factors that will enable you to open and grow a business. So for example, if it's a side hustle, you'd be like, okay, well, the opportunity is that I could, I have a car, so I could just sign up for Uber, right? Um, or maybe you see like, there's a new trend emerging. You're like, oh, all the kids love Fortnite and I, you know, can draw great Fortnite characters and I could sell them like that. That is maybe one, one opportunity that you would have. Okay. Um, or maybe your house already has an amazing office space in it and you're like, great. Now I don't have to lease anything like awesome. That's an opportunity. Okay. Um, another strategy here is to look at your potential competitors and identify what their weaknesses are so that you can use them as opportunities, right? 
um, threats. So on the flip side, these are external factors that will impede your ability to grow or start a business, okay? So a good example would be um, market saturation. So if you are looking at opening a bakery and you look around your neighborhood and there's already three bakeries, that that's, that's probably a threat to you, right? Like it's going to be pretty hard to position yourself as too different from these other three bakeries in your neighborhood. Okay. So that's, that's a threat to consider. Um, or maybe you want to start a business selling like luxury goods and you are like, wow, the economy is really not great right now. Like maybe luxury goods are not the best thing to start out on right now. That's again, a threat. Okay. So it's a good thing to really do this and really look at it. It's going to, you're doing basic market research. You're really looking into yourself and seeing if, and I can tell you right now, I don't want to say most, but probably most of the people that I've worked with, um, didn't take these considerations when they started their business and it didn't necessarily make their business fail or anything like that, but it impeded them. It, it, they, they were things that they had to learn along the way. Whereas if you can kind of identify these things before you even start, you have a one-up on everybody else, okay? When we look at this whole picture together, so I, I should have made the little sheet, but when you look at the whole picture together, we can develop a strategy to make business work, um, make the business work, or if you're like, you know what, this whole idea, this whole business idea is not gonna work, like just go back to the drawing board, okay? Then, okay, so we're going to assume you're still on board. You've come up with this idea that works well for your strengths and weaknesses and opportunities and threats. And we're going to get into the logistical detail now. So you still want to have this baby. Um, we're going to use your SWOT analysis and your why and decide, are you selling a product or a service or a combination of both? Are you going to build an online business or are you going to have like a storefront or is it just going to be out of your home? These are the logistics you kind of need to go through. Uh, how many hours are you going to be putting in? Are you going to be working full time or part time? Are you going to need an employee or a contractor? Uh, those are kind of like the basic logistical details that you can kind of plan out. And again, write down because this is part of any good business plan. Okay. Then we're going to go into your target market detail. So this is a great time to really get a firm understanding of the problem that your business is going to solve. So uh, if you're selling Fortnite drawings, you're solving the problem of kids who love Fortnite not being able to draw their own characters and they want to they want a character that someone's drawn like that is legitimately like every single business that's out there is solving some kind of problem. Okay. So you're going to determine what problem your business is solving for your potential customers. Evaluate a few things on this. How are the customers solving this problem currently? Like a AKA who are your competitors? Okay. Um, and then once you determine that, once you determine who your competitors are, you can kind of do like a SWOT analysis on them. So you can say, what do I think that they're doing right? What do I think that I would improve on? Okay. Look at their pricing structure. Look at their website. Look at how they present themselves to clients, um, their reviews, how they market, what their offerings are, that kind of thing. This is going to lead you to define your market and who you want to pursue, like your target customer. Okay. And how you'll position yourself within that market. So while these decisions will surely not be you know, set in stone, they give you a really good starting basis. Okay. You're not going to sell to everybody in the world. Okay. So whether you are targeting a demographic area or like a geographical area, I should say, or a certain demographic. So if you're like, I really want to focus on nine to 12 year old boys who love Fortnite, that is a much better uh, market for you to go after because then you're really gonna know how to push your marketing and you're really gonna know exactly how you can help them solve that problem, okay? Um, okay, so again, so making these items your focus now rather than months or years down the road is gonna save you money and time and frustration in your marketing attempts. So then the next step, once you have that logistical detail and that target market detail set, 
you're going to test your ideas. So you are going to start asking other people for feedback. Obviously, friends and family is great. Even better would be somebody who's your target customer. So if you can ask a nine-year-old boy, what do you think of this Fortnite drawing? Like how much would you pay for it? Or how much would you ask your parents to pay for it? Right? It's, it can be really hard when you're the center of it and you're the one that's come up with all the ideas to kind of see the forest through the trees. And I'm speaking from my own experience here. Like it's really like, you can be like, you know what? I love that idea. I think everybody's going to love that idea. And then as soon as you talk to somebody else, they say something that you're like, I did not even think of that. And don't, don't take offense to it. Use it as a growing, a way to grow, right? Um, this feedback, is going to be completely invaluable to you. Like if you could even do like a survey, like survey monkey is completely free. Like the, that kind of research is again, steps ahead of every other person that is trying to do the same thing as you. I can pretty much promise you that. It's kind of like if we're thinking about it, like as a pregnancy sort of thing, um, it's like getting advice from seasoned parents being like, yeah, I have a baby and this is how it went for me. Like you would ask other parents about that stuff. So why wouldn't you ask other people who you're trying to sell to or other business owners about this kind of stuff as well, right? Uh, don't forget about the money. So you know that obviously I would never, <laughs> I would never just be like signing off this video without even talking about money. Um, I would never recommend making any decision without considering the money side of things. If you were asking me if you should consider cons starting a family, I would say, well, can you afford it? Like, does, does your budget allow for it? And so it's the same thing as a business. You need to consider how much money is this going to cost in terms of like every business or some startup costs. Okay. So even if you're not running like inventory, even if you're not leasing a space, you're still going to have to apply for a business license. You're still probably going to have to get insurance. So there's always going to be some cost to start the business. I want you to look at that. I want you to determine how much money is it going to need to start? How much capital do I have to work with? And how long is that going to last me? You can also kind of forecast how long is it going to take for me to become profitable? So if you're like, okay, I know it's going to cost me a thousand dollars to start this business. For example, how many sales do you need to have before you get that money back? Okay. Um, and how long do you think that will take? Do you think you're going to make five sales right out the gate? Or do you think that's going to take a month? Is that month going to be okay for you? These are serious considerations you need to make. Okay. Um, we will get more detailed on the startup costs next week, or I shouldn't say next week because next week is Christmas. So I'm probably going to be busy next Tuesday. You probably are too. Um, but next video, we're going to talk about like the more detailed startup costs that you need to consider. But like I said, business licensing, insurance, if you're incorporating, there's going to be the incorporation costs. So even, um, so even those things, again, you need to consider. If you've gone through all these steps and you've decided that you're ready to commit to the amazing adventure of starting a business or having a baby, join me next week. Um, again, not next week, next video for the next phase. It'll be a bit like the next one will be a bit like nesting for your baby. So you've decided you're like, you, you're pregnant. This is happening. Now let's prepare for it. So same with having a business, like you've decided this is happening. Now let's go through all the steps of deciding what tax structure you want to do, um, how to get deeper into your marketing plan, that kind of thing. Okay. So I hope that you guys look forward to that. I will see you in two weeks because, um, in two weeks is January 1st. I'm just going to have a video that day. I don't really mind. It's especially the start of a new year. It always just feels so fresh. So it's a great time to talk about starting something new. Um, but next week, I'm not going to be here. I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas and I will see you in the new year. Bye.